I've been able to boost my FPS by about 75% in Cyberpunk 2077 with little to no effect to the incredible visuals that the game offers. And today I'm going to run you guys through all of the exact settings I'm using to do it. We'll start off in the video settings tab. There's not too much to cover in here. V-Sync, you need to make sure this is off. It's going to help out a lot with the input latency by having this off. You might get a bit of screen tearing uh, if you're running on a lower refresh rate monitor, something like a 60 hertz, but I'd still say that's worth it. Maximum FPS, most people should be leaving this off. Windowed mode, usually I say run full screen for best input latency, but honestly, windowed borderless runs just as well, and you can alt tab in and out a little bit quicker and stuff, which is nice for our general gaming sessions. Resolution, make sure this is set to your native resolution of your monitor. HDR, I can't turn this on. I would recommend you don't turn it on unless you have a solid HDR screen that you're running with. And NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. This is going to depend on what your setup is between your GPU and your CPU. If you have a much stronger GPU than you have a CPU, so you know, you're running something like a 30 series GPU, but an older CPU, then uh, you want to run on with boost enabled. If you're on a situation like mine, where your GPU and your CPU kind of match each other and they're both fairly new, fairly strong, then just using on is a better situation. Okay, now time for the fun stuff. Let's move on over to the graphics tab. Quick preset, you can just leave this at whatever it's set at. As soon as we start changing things down here, it will change to custom automatically. If you're actually in game at the moment watching this video, you won't see the texture quality setting. Uh, you actually have to come all the way back to the main menu, as you can see here, then go to settings, and then you will see this. So it doesn't let you change it while you're in game. Texture quality, you should be able to leave this on high, assuming you are running an eight gig GPU or higher. Uh, this has no effect on FPS if you are running one of those kind of cards. If you're running a four gig or dare I say it, a two gig card, you're probably gonna struggle to run the game anyway, but in those situations, you're gonna need to come down to either medium or low. This will heavily affect how textures look in game. It will make the game look a lot worse. So for most people, just leave this at high and you'll be absolutely fine. Frame generation is not available for me because I don't have a 40 series card. I'm currently running a 3090. If you do have a 40 series card, then I would recommend going and watching some videos that talk about frame generation. There's a bunch of them on YouTube. This should really help uh, with FPS if you can use it. But for me, it's grayed out, so I won't be giving any recommendations on it. We've then got a bunch of super resolution options between NVIDIA DLSS and AMD Fidelity FX super resolution. These all do a similar thing where they will actually lower the internal resolution of your game, which will give you a nice FPS boost. And then it essentially uses this super resolution AI technology to upscale the game to look as if you never lost the resolution in the first place without losing any FPS. So it's a really amazing bit of functionality we have in this game. And of the ones we have here, DLSS Super Resolution tends to be the best. My current recommendation for most people to start off with is pull this over to the quality setting. You don't want to go any lower than this because you do start to really degrade the quality. And then DLSS sharpness, somewhere between 0.75 and 1. Some people might find 1 to look too sharp. Uh, I tend to like running around 0.8. I feel like it's a really good balance where I get some nice sharpness uh, without everything looking a bit too crisp. NVIDIA DLAA, you can leave this off. And then resolution scaling options down here, we can leave all these off because we've set up DLSS up here. In the basic section, field of view, I'd recommend you max this out unless you have a real preference of a lower FOV in game. The next four settings, film grain, chromatic aberration, depth of field, and lens flare are all post-processing effects that will make the game look in a certain way. Film grain adds a load of the graininess uh, as if it's like a TV show or something like that on it. I don't like that, so I turn it off. Chromatic aberration distorts the light around the edges of the screen. That's not something I personally like, so I turn that off. Depth the field makes distant objects look a lot more blurry, especially when you're aiming down sight. It does look a little bit realistic, but it's not something that I like in games because I like to have as much visibility as possible, so I turn that off. Lens flare, I like to leave on. I think the lens flares, the scattering lights and stuff, there's a lot of that in this game, all of the neon around that you're looking at, and it looks really, really nice, so I like to leave this on. These four are personal preference though, so try them out and see what you like. And speaking of personal preferences, motion blur, you can set this to high, low, or off. Off being my preference. I don't like motion blur in games, especially when I'm running at a high refresh rate. If you're running the game at sort of lower FPS, then having motion blur on can hide the stutteriness a little bit. And some people just like motion blur. So a bit of personal preference. This doesn't affect your performance whatsoever. So pick whichever one you like. 
For me, that's going to be off. Moving into the advanced section now, contact shadows. These are specifically the shadows that an object casts on itself from a light source. So if you've got the sun beaming down on a stack of planks, for example, then one plank will have its shadows cascading down to the next one and so forth. This setting is a really hard one because there are a ton of contact shadows rendered in in Cyberpunk 2077, and therefore having them off does gain you sizable amounts of FPS, but it does make your game look a lot flatter than you would like. Personally, I like to leave these on because I can handle it, but if you do want to gain a couple of percent to a few percent FPS come the end of these settings, I would recommend you come here and turn this off as one of your first options. Next, we've got improved facial lighting geometry. In simple terms, it makes characters' faces look a lot better, especially when you're in close conversation with them and their face is right on the screen in front of you. I would recommend that you leave this on. It has little to no effect on performance and it really makes faces look a lot more realistic in terms of their animations as they speak to you. Anisotropy, also known as anisotropic filtering, I recommend in every single game that you leave this at its max. It's gonna really help what textures look like when you're looking at them from slightly side-on angles as opposed to looking at them directly in front of you. And it has little to no effect on performance in any game that I've seen. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Always max this out in every single game that you play. Local shadow mesh quality will determine how accurate the shadow cast on a wall is in comparison to the geometry of the object that is cast in that shadow. So if an object has a load of kind of little jagged edges and you have this on high, it will accurately represent that in its shadow. Whereas if you start turning this down, you might get some sort of smoother rounded edges. Honestly, I don't see much difference turning this down to medium in terms of the visual quality, uh, and you do gain a couple of percentage FPS by doing so, so that would be my recommendation for this setting. Then we've got local shadow quality, which to most people you can essentially just call the shadow setting. It is just going to determine how blurry or sharp the shadows are in the game as a whole. You've got high, medium, low, or off. Obviously, do not put this on off unless you are incredibly struggling for FPS because it will just make the game look horrible. I tend to find that either medium or low, depending on where I am in the game, uh, gives a really nice boost to FPS um, without looking too different from the high settings. So pick between low and medium. I'm going to go for medium because I've got a pretty beefy PC here. Um, yeah, pick, pick between these two and see which one works best for you. Cascaded Shadows range. Now, Cascaded Shadows are essentially shadows cast by the sun uh, when you're outside in the daylight. Uh, it's going to determine how far away the uh, shadows are actually rendered in. As you start turning this down, objects really far away from you uh, start losing all their shadows. It might seem like this is a good idea to turn down because they're really far away from you, so who cares? But it really does affect the game, even from sort of a, uh, a, a subliminal thought as you're playing. You just notice these things aren't missing and it makes the game look a bit horrid. So I would recommend you actually leave this on high. It has little to no effect on FPS, as I've said with a couple of other settings here. And yeah, you just keep those shadows rendered in at that far distance. Cascaded Shadows resolution determines how good the quality of the sun shadows are in general across the game. I found that there is very little difference between medium and high unless you are literally sitting there still looking at a shadow in front of you. You just you just don't tend to notice it. But you do gain a nice little bit of FPS, so I'd recommend medium here. And then distant shadows resolution is sort of a combination of the two previous ones. So assuming we've got the cascaded shadows range high, which we do, then it's going to determine how those really far away shadows look in game. Interestingly, there isn't much to debate here. There's little to no FPS effect from turning from high to low. And it also looks like there's very little effect in terms of the actual resolution either. So it's a setting that doesn't seem to do too much. Therefore, I just leave it at high uh, to just hopefully get a better looking game in general as I play. Then we move on to volumetric fog resolution, which is an absolute hog of FPS. It's one of the biggest FPS hogs of all the settings we're gonna go through today. And I'm actually gonna recommend and you bring this all the way down to low for most people, unless you are running a real beast of a system, uh, in which case you may be able to come to medium. Honestly, it's all to do with how about that bog and sort of gas coming out of pipes and stuff as you're moving around the city looks. Uh, it doesn't look too much different going down even from ultra to low, once again, unless you're sitting there directly looking at it, um, and you are gaining a sizable amount of FPS from dropping this, so 
Most people bring this all the way down to low. Volumetric cloud quality determines the quality of clouds in game, which in most scenarios doesn't do much because you either can't see the clouds because you are inside a building or even when you are outside, the clouds are blocked by everything around you anyway. So this is only going to have an effect in areas where you've got a bit more of the skybox available to see. I'd recommend you put this at high. It means that when you are in the scenarios where you can see the clouds, it's not really tanking your FPS like Ultra does, and it looks pretty much just as good. But keep in mind, this won't affect FPS much in most scenarios in the game. Max dynamic decals, you can just leave this at ultra. This is only really gonna have an effect when you are shooting bullets at your gun and it's rendering in like the little bullets as they come out and stuff like that. It has no effect on FPS really, so just leave it on ultra. And then we've got screen space reflections quality. In simple terms, this is how good do reflections look in Cyberpunk. And this is the biggest FPS affecting setting in the entire game as we go from the, not ultra, but psycho setting, which absolutely destroys your FPS. I'd recommend you don't bother doing this unless you are really caring about every single little bit of quality possible. Uh, down to the off setting where you have no reflections, uh, but you the game looks awful. You should never be doing that. So I would recommend here that you go for the medium setting. It's a real good striking of balance between good FPS and reasonably good reflections throughout. You never want to go lower than this because there are so many reflections in Cyberpunk being cast off of water on the floor um, or just general glass surfaces and it does make the game look awesome. So yeah, medium is a really good balance here for most people. Subsurface scattering quality has no effect on FPS from what I've seen, so I recommend you leave it on high. Ambient occlusion, in most games I recommend you turn down because it does have a solid effect on FPS. In this game though, haven't seen much effect whatsoever and it does make the game look a lot better, so I'd recommend you leave this on high. Then color precision, another one that you can just leave on high, it just makes colors look better and has no effect on FPS. Mirror quality, it does affect FPS when you are using a mirror, when you're doing your character customization or when you're looking in a mirror or something. Uh, but in those scenarios, you don't care too much about crazy performance anyway, and you'd rather just make your character look better. So leave it on high. Level of detail is another setting that I would usually have recommended you turn down a little bit because it would have a solid amount of effect on FPS, but I don't see it having much effect at all in this game. So I'd recommend you leave it on high. And then finally, crowd density. This is the first setting we've gone through today which doesn't have much effect in terms of your GPU as much as it is affected by your CPU. This is going to determine how many NPCs you actually find walking around the game, which really plays into the immersiveness and the feel of Night City as you are walking around. If you have even slightly a good CPU, I'd recommend you leave this on high because it's going to make the game world feel so much more immersive. However, if you do struggle on the CPU front, you're running an older CPU, you can bring this down to medium or even low uh, at the expense of the actual gameplay feel. So uh, pick your poison and uh, choose whichever crowd density makes sense for you. And the last option we've got down here is ray tracing, which a lot of people will look at and instantly say, nope, don't want to turn it on because it's going to kill my FPS. And it can do, but luckily they've given us a load of individual ray traced things that we can turn on and off, which is awesome. So let's go down the list here. Ray traced reflections. This will replace the screen space reflections that I mentioned up here, which can really tank your FPS. It will basically just replace this with ray traced reflections that do look a ton better. They look incredible, but they have a real big effect on FPS. Currently, I am leaving these off and I'm going to play through the game a bit more at my new awesome FPS. And if I ever feel like I do need them, I am willing to turn them on. So this is sort of a personal preference thing. You are going to lose a solid amount of FPS, maybe like, you know, 30, 20 to 30% for a game that looks incredible. Yeah, pick your poison.
off or on. I'm going to leave them off for now. Ray Trace Sun Shadows and Local Shadows. I'd recommend running this setup here where Sun Shadows are off and Local Shadows are on. The reason being that the Sun Shadows uh, have a bit more effect on performance when you turn these on and they don't really look much better. Um, and it's sort of the opposite for Local Shadows. They tend to look a lot better uh, for very little performance hit. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting one. You'd assume that Ray Tracing of any kind kills your performance. Well, for Local Shadows, it doesn't. So yeah, I'd recommend you turning these on. Ray Trace Lighting, I didn't see much effect from turning this on in terms of the actual quality of the lighting. Um, it changes sort of how the lighting looks a bit, but it doesn't affect how good the lighting looks in, in general. So I've just left this off. Uh, I haven't properly played around with this though, so I can't give too much of info on this. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'll leave it off. The last two things in here are path tracing for gameplay and for photo mode. Path tracing is a new bit of technology that is basically even better looking than ray tracing, but you are literally losing almost all of your FPS by doing this. As in, you are only going to run path tracing if you have a high-end 40 series card and you don't really care about FPS, you just want the game to look as good as possible, which is pretty much no one. It's cool that we've got it here, but I would never recommend using it, honestly, at the moment. So there we go, guys. That's all the settings you need for a sizable FPS increase with little to no effect on the quality of the game. After you've dialed these in and tested the game out, let me know in the comments below how much FPS you gained and what your specific specs are so that we can get that knowledge sharing going and seeing how these settings affect all the different setups we have. If you want to gain even more FPS in Cyberpunk or any game on PC, go and watch this video next where I take you guys through a full breakdown of the best NVIDIA control panel settings in 2023 for maximum FPS and visuals.